and welcome to Seen Through Glass. Now I've never hid the fact that I am a big fan of what is now the old shape Aston Martin Vantage. I've made plenty of videos about them and been lucky enough to film and drive some pretty special versions of the old shape Vantage, but I've never had the chance to drive either of the special GT variants, either the GT8 or the GT12, because yes, that is one right there, painted in a Lamborghini color. We'll come back to that later. But unbelievably, today, I'm gonna to be getting behind the wheel of this absolute monster. A quick reminder then as to what the GT12 actually is. Think of it as the most hardcore sort of variant of the V12 Vantage. It's kind of like a 48 Pista to a 48 GTB or a GT3 RS to a 911. It's lighter, 100 kilos lighter. It's stiffer. It's got huge amounts of aero, one of the loudest exhausts you've ever heard, wider suspension and just amazingness. I mean, that's the best way to describe this car, amazingness. That is actually a scientific term. Um, I did mention it, Lamborghini paint. This is Verde Mantis and it definitely makes the car stand out, but I think even if this car was black or poo brown, you couldn't help but notice it along the road because it doesn't look like it should be on the road. It looks like it should be on a racetrack. And of course, Aston Martin Racing, huge amounts of success with the Vantage at Le Mans and, and British GT, whether it had the V12 or the V8. But for me, the sort of this shape Vantage with a hunk and great V12 in it is just iconic and yes six liter v12 putting out basically 600 horsepower now it does use aston's relatively old school single clutch sport shift three gearbox but i'm not that worried about that because i had to go in a v12 vantage s with the same gearbox and actually it was all right so we're going to find out when we jump inside to the relatively bespoke cockpit but yeah my anticipation is quite high with this thing ever since it launched i basically fanboyed over it but i've never got a chance to really get up close with one because just a hundred cars were made extremely rare very limited production and you had to be kind of mad to say yes i want to spend two hundred fifty thousand pounds on that but if you did bravo you're my hero amazing <laughs> of a fail. I just filmed my entire first drive showing all my initial reactions to this car without the microphone being plugged in properly to that camera. So yeah, all that footage is, is useless. Uh, it means I've got to go again, but I'm not going to complain about that because, oh my God, I might have fallen in love with this car. This could be one of my top five all-time cars. I should probably stop talking whilst the car's not moving because you have to experience this with me and I'm just going to have to be really good at, at relaying my reactions second time round, I suppose. Um, now, David, the absolute legend who owns both this and the GTA, said really the best way to experience both of them is in sport mode, which I've selected, uh, and using the flappy paddles. Now, a big white van has just gone down the road in front of me. I want to leave him a bit because, yes, we have to exploit this car's full potential, and that means revving it out. And when you start to rev it out, you catch big white vans pretty quickly. Okay, are you ready for this? Headphone users, beware. <laughs> How is this a road car? How did this leave the Aston Martin factory sounding like this? It makes my Ferrari 360 with the Challenge exhaust sound like a Prius. I mean, it's absolutely incredible. Forget how great that V12 sounds the majority of the time in any kind of Vantage. With this GT12 system, it's just... <laughs> I 
unreal and I have of course now caught that white van and suddenly this road is a lot busier than it was 10 minutes ago when I filmed my incredible first reaction. That first take was so good because this thing just absolutely took my breath away. So whilst we're going a little bit slower, let me talk you through some of the, well, less interesting details I suppose. Uh, inside I did mention it's kind of a bespoke interior. This kind of whole centre console here was bespoke for the GT12, all carbon fibre and kind of, I think they called it the waterfall or something like that. Also got carbon fibre door panel inserts. Apart from that, it's quite sort of iconically vantage. Yes, nice carbon fibre seats which are pretty hugging and supportive, uh, but yeah, it, it does feel like a sort of normal vantage trunk around you, small and even with that wider track, it's still nimble, I think. Can't believe how unlucky I've been with my positioning on this road right now because this car is all about pushing on. It's just addictive. That soundtrack and the speed because it's not that quick, this car, it, in relative terms. Okay, 600 horsepower V12, yes, it, it's fast. But of course, these days, cars are just a lot quicker, especially with speedier gearboxes. It's not really about that. And the speed really starts to uh, impress you kind of above 60 miles an hour, which unfortunately I can't really exploit on these roads. Oh, and that's a tight spot. I said the car didn't feel big, but it does on occasions because yes, it does have a much wider track to a stand advantage. But there we go, I had a little excuse, a little excuse for a little acceleration. This thing will spin up its rear tires just to kind of catch you out, just to be like, hey, banter. My F-Type R was 550 horsepower to the rear wheels. This 600 horsepower to the rear wheels, but it feels like the rear tires are just made out of mush. It is like, like, you just keep feeling the car moving around, first, second, third, fourth gear. You have to be so careful with how you use that accelerator pedal, but it is massively rewarding because as the speed builds, I feel like you generally start to notice the downforce, that like the car does hunker down. It, it gives you more confidence with speed. And in fact, when you start to throw it in corners, that's when you start to go, okay, now I'm seeing the track potential because the rest of the time, like this, I'll be honest, I just want to cruise. You want sort of long acceleration so you can get all the noise, see those revs, hear that V12, but not actually sort of, you know, attack the road until you go around a couple of corners and go, oh, I want to do that again. I want to do that again. It's absolutely amazing. I'm not sure I'm loving the green. It's, it is very green and it's hard to escape in here. I just, everywhere I look, I see Lambo green. I think I'd go for a slightly different color scheme, but what's quite nice is the majority of GT12s were sort of personalized. You know, there's not very many which are similar specs. And that's quite cool, I think, because 100 cars, very few. And to have them all slightly different is nice. But fundamentally, as I kind of mentioned in the intro, I wouldn't care if this car was poo brown or, or gold chrome. I just, just want to drive it and listen to it. We've got to do some runs with the windows down because that's another level. But look at me now, just comfy. V12 Vantage, it's got to be in my garage at some point. Honestly, GT12 seems a lot on the used market, they're still nearly 300 grand, which is big, big money. And I have to be realistic to the fact that as great as this thing is, that, that feels a lot. But uh, anyway, window down, here we go. I'll be honest, I'm not brave enough to mash that throttle pedal. Every time I get close to like 80 or 90% full throttle, the thing is just, I mean, moving, it's like Strictly Come Dancing in Aston Martin form. And once again, I seem to have come across traffic. So I'm having a bit of bad luck at the moment with test drives and hitting traffic. I need to plan my routes a bit better or just go and find some quieter back roads. But I like, I, I like this section. It felt like I can exploit the car properly. So hopefully that van is about to turn. Yes, turn right. Let this little Kia through and away we go. again sport shift three not a problem honestly <laughs> that was a bump that unsettled the car ever so slightly 
I know people love to hark on about manuals these days. Oh, you've got to have a manual, you're not a proper driver if you're not a manual, save the manuals. And I agree, I've got a manual 360, but not every car needs it. Sometimes cars suit single clutch or even their older gearboxes. And when I drove V12 on the I was so impressed by Sport Shift 3, a bit like I was impressed with 599 GTO. It's usable, it's livable, it's engaging. And it doesn't let this car down. If anything, it gives it a bit of a bit of something, something, a bit of emotion, a bit of character, and it feels like you're kind of like, oh, hunkering on, like, oh, bang that gear, and it clicks in. If you had a sort of really buttery smooth PDK box, it would change what this car is and was. I really want all this traffic to go away because I need to show you what this car is like around a corner. So I'm now going to go really slowly, kind of rudely slowly hope that no one comes flying up my backside because I know there's a right hand turn coming up and if I can at least get one corner that's a step in the right direction okay here we go oh, yes it just grips hydraulically assisted steering feels so nice and again rewarding that's why I keep saying about this car it's so rewarding whilst it's terrifying in terms of its power to the rear it's also something that implores you just to keep going keep driving and I know it's an easy thing to say oh you know it's all about the sound but it's such an important part of a supercar experience oh there's the police let's hope they're now coming to me yes they are I think no they're not Whew. <laughs> Oh, nah, I pooped myself. Those police came right up my bum real quick. That was scary, because I didn't want David to get a big old speeding ticket. <laughs> right, here we go. but oh my god let me try and think what else is in this price bracket 300 odd grand 250 to 300 grand i'm not sure many cars will give you this kind of emotion there will be a ton of cars which are faster which are quicker around the nurburgring which are theoretically better but they don't make me do this i don't want to get out i told david i'd be 20 minutes i don't want to go back david i don't want to go back Second gear pull, windows down. <laughs> yes! Oh God, oh golly God, I just, I mean, this has really messed me up. I mean, I have a ton of cars that I continuously lust after, dream of, want to buy, and, and I didn't think this was one of them, but now it is. It's just the perfect package when it comes to this era of Vantage. Now, for paupers like me, I do have an option that would maybe get me close to a GT12 without actually having to spend 250 grand plus for one, because what if you were to go out and buy a V12 Vantage S with the Sport Shift 3, put an outrageous exhaust on it. In fact, I think you can pretty much get that GT12 exhaust system for the standard V12S, stiffen up the suspension, and away you go. Surely that's still gonna be enjoyable, but I wonder whether it would feel as special as this, because there's just something about it. The fact that it's not that quick, but it's kind of brutal and so aggressive that it just feels sort of uh, like a race car from 1950s. Like you're at Le Mans in some DBR one. Uh, 
so bloody brilliant. I was planning to do a whole lot of flybys, external shots, tracking shots, so you could hear this car from the outside, but, but remember that police car? Well, he came and wagged his finger at me because I think he knew I was going up and down a few too many times. So we're not going to be doing that. Instead, I'm just going to stare at this car a little bit longer, maybe take some photos, and dream of the day that I once again get to jump into a GC12. So if you're out there, if you're in the market for a special Aston, if like me, you love this shape, this era, and you're thinking, oh, well, everyone says the GTA is so great. It's cheaper, it's manual, I'll go for that. Don't do it. Save up, rob a bank, somehow get the extra 100 grand and go for the GT12 because it is night and day special. Fine, I haven't driven a GT8, but I've been in the passenger seat of Schmees and yeah, it's cool, but it just feels like a sort of loud, V8 Vantage. This feels like a sort of another step forward, something that's special in the history of automotive world life. I don't know what, but yeah, unbelievable. Let me know below what you think about this green, because that is hard to miss. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Huge thanks once again to David for inviting me down. Let me have a go in this beauty. I hope to catch up with him and the car, other parts of the world in the future. So give it a thumbs up and make sure to stay subscribed for plenty more videos to come.